Bonjour, good evening and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah al -Fat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa witnessed today in the presence of the Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the final stage of the joint exercise Samoom 3, which took place over several days with live ammunition in the Kingdom of Bahrain between the Bahrain Defense Force and the United Arab Emirates Armed Forces. Upon arrival, His Majesty the King was received by the exercise instructor, Commander of the Royal Guard, Brigadier General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and a number of senior officers. Officers. His Majesty toured the exercise operation area and His Highness Sheikh Nasser briefed His Majesty on the course of the exercise and the stages of implementation as well as the success achieved to reach the desired goals. A number of Bahraini and Emirates officers participating in the exercise greeted His Majesty the King where he congratulated them on the success they achieved in executing the joint operations. His Majesty the King welcomed the UAE Armed Forces in Bahrain affirming that the exercise stems from from the deep historic and strategic relations between the two countries in military and defense fields and contributes to increasing combat readiness and exchanging expertise to face various challenges that threaten the region's security. His Majesty commended the unity of the two countries' armed forces and the Restoring Hope operation led by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, which represents a model of historic and broadly unity between the two countries and their strong positions against all forms of terrorism. His Majesty the King expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for directing the exercise and for his efforts to develop the Royal Guard's combat competencies. His Majesty expressed a pride in the Royal Guard and the Bahrain Defence Force for their great efforts in performing their noble duties inside and outside the country, wishing them success. The visit was attended by the Chief of Staff. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued a dict in number 31 and 32 of 2018, setting the timetable for municipal elections, nominations, adding a general committee to the 13 polling and sorting general committees in accordance with the provisions of Law Decree number 3 of 2002 regarding the municipal council's election system. The registered voters in the electioneering tables are invited to attend at the polling committee's headquarters to elect municipal council members from 8 a.m until 8 p.m. on Saturday, November the 24th. And in such cases that require a second round of election, the second round will take place on Saturday, December the 1st from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. Nominations for Municipal Council's membership will be open for registration starting from Wednesday, October the 17th until Sunday, October the 21st. Nomination applications can be submitted in the various Municipal Council constituencies to the competent committees. A general committee has been added 
added to the 13 general polling and sorting committees for municipal elections as stipulated in Edict No. 35 of 2014 regarding definition of municipal constituencies and areas and their boundaries and the number of subcommittees for municipal elections. Edict No. 45 of 2014 stipulated adding a general polling and sorting committee for municipal elections subject to the provisions applicable on the general polling and sorting committees. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Gidaibiya Palace His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. During the meeting, both sides reviewed domestic issues along with the latest regional and international developments. Their Royal Highnesses lauded the achievements attained during the prosperous reign of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa as well as the freedoms and democratic practices the Kingdom enjoys. They also praised the national awareness that strengthens national unity and rejects all that negatively affects the social fabric. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince discussed the government's exerted efforts to sustain the economic development march and realize its goals. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired today the cabinet meeting at Gdaibiya Palace in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The cabinet strongly denounced the illegal and irresponsible behavior committed in a number of areas during Ashura season despite the freedom of religious practices granted by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The cabinet urged the concerned authorities to impose maximum legal and regulatory sanctions against anyone found to be involved in these disgraceful acts, whether directly or indirectly, and to penalize all who undermine the country's gains. His Royal Highness directed the Ministry of Interior to cooperate with the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments to take strict measures against the perpetrators.
Upon the recommendation of the coordinating committee headed by His Royal Highness Crown Prince, the Cabinet congratulated the launch of the Government Innovation Competition, which provides an opportunity for public sector employees to propose innovative projects that achieve the government's priorities and develops government's performance. The Cabinet approved launching a national plan to promote patriotism, which derives its principles from the royal vision that aims to continue building on what has been accomplished to strengthen the internal front, preserve national security and social stability, promote loyalty and patriotism, consolidate the values of citizenship, maintain moderation of religious discourse, spread coexistence and commitment to national unity. Within the Cabinet's follow-up of the plan to reduce government expenditures by reducing ministries and government agencies to their operating expenses, the meeting reviewed the report of the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism on the program to reduce expenditures and the ministry in the short and medium term. The ministry has been successful through some initiatives in reducing recurrent expenses by 68% over the past three years. In this regard, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed ministries and government authorities to increase the outcomes of their programs to reduce expenditures in the short and medium terms to assess the current and future situation with regard to the government plan. His Royal Highness commended the efforts of the ministry and its employees. The Cabinet approved the ownership of a number of properties for public benefit in Tubli, Bilad al Qadim, Salmaniya, Tashan, Galali, and Muharraq to preserve the surrounding roads and streets and to build parking spaces. The Cabinet instructed the Minister of Works, Municipalities, Affairs, and Urban Planning to issue the necessary resolutions. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, ordered to speed up building more parking in the old market in Muharraq and to complete the administrative and technical procedures related to building a multi-story car park in Mahara. The meeting approved a new legislation on international crimes which identifies four international crimes that may be considered in Bahrain courts. They include genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes and the crime of aggression. The cabinet approved a draft law approving the accession to the Treaty on Principles governing the activities of states in the exploration and use of outer space approved by the United Nations General Assembly and referred it to the Legislative Authority. The Cabinet approved a draft law approving the accession to the Convention on International Liability for damage caused by space objects and referred it to the Legislative Authority. The meeting reviewed the Minister of Education's report on education's contribution in social welfare according to indicators in the report of the Boston Consulting Group. The report indicated that Bahrain has achieved remarkable progress in terms of the role of education in development and the creation of welfare. Bahrain ranked the 12th in the Middle East and North Africa in 2011 and ranked 4th in 2018. The Cabinet affirmed the government's support of the Educational March Commending the ministry's efforts exerted in this field. The health minister informed the cabinet of the selection of the Ministry of Health in Bahrain for the United Nations Interagency Task Force Award for its outstanding contribution to the achievement of sustainable development goals related to the control of non-transmissible diseases due to the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister. The Shura Council will hold a regional parliamentary meeting on the 2nd of October under the patronage of its chairman Ali As Saleh. As Saleh said that the meeting will discuss Arab youth empowerment. He added that the council is keen on holding the meeting that will be attended by representatives of about 18 national councils. The meeting will launch mechanisms and means to empower Arab youth. As Saleh also asserted that the Kingdom of Bahrain has a distinguished record of youth achievements in various fields thanks to the patronage of His Majesty the King and the strategies and plans of the government chaired by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. He highlighted the role of His Majesty the King's representative for charity work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in supporting youth participation in a number of programs and forms that boost achievements and creativity. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, attended the high level preliminary meeting entitled Nelson Mandela Peace Summit. The Minister was appointed to attend this meeting by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness Crown Prince Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. The meeting was held on the sidelines of the 73rd session of the UN General Assembly held in New York, which focuses on world peace and coincides with the 100th anniversary of Nelson Mandela's birthday. The event will witness the participation of many leaders, heads of government and ministers from around the world. Sheikh Khalid underscored the leg legacy of Mandela in facing the challenges that threat future generations in light of world determination to address these challenges and counter them. Hailing the values of tolerance and persistence Mandela possessed that ultimately made him a humanitarian immortal symbol. The minister added that a clear vision and tangible actions are prerequisites for the spread of tolerance in the effort of building peaceful and stable societies that are characterized by mutual understanding and respect. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also attended the unveiling ceremony of the status in honor of the late president. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated yesterday in a meeting of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, the Arab Republic of Egypt, and the Hashmid Kingdom of Jordan. The meeting was held on the sidelines of the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly held in New York. A statement following the meeting was issued, which says that on Sunday, September the 23rd, 2018, the Ministers of Foreign Affairs of Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Bahrain, Egypt, and the UAE held a consultative meeting in New York prior to the 73rd session of the General Assembly. The meeting aimed at activating the joint Arab role in dealing with various uh, crises in the region. During the meeting, the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs were briefed by the Secretary General's Special Envoy for Syria, Stefan Di Mastura. Regarding the situation in Syria, the Minister decided to continue consultations as needed. The 16th the meeting of the Consultative Council for Cultural Development and Islamic World commenced today. The meeting comes in line with celebrating Muharraq as the capital of the Islamic culture 2018 in the Arab region. The president of Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hamay bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, delivered a speech in which he stressed the importance of the meeting for the Arab and Islamic world, noting that taking pride in the historic and geographic identity must be translated into concrete achievements. Chairman of the Legislative and Legal Opinion Commission and the Executive Director of the 2018 elections, Councillor Nawaf Abdullah Hamza, announced that the voter lists in the four supervisory committees will be available during the period from Thursday, the 27th of September to Wednesday, the 3rd of October. Councillor Hamza noted that the display of the voter lists will be electronic for the first time rather than having them in paper form. He also underscored the development of electronic services that allow citizens to apply for correction on the voter list through the election website vote.bh. The executive director called on citizens to ensure that their names are on the voter list and to review their statements within the seven-day period. He also called on voters to make sure their data on the smart CPR card is updated.